town wall is the remains of a 13th and 14th century fortification that runs around the outskirts of what was medieval Newcastle. So today I'm going to show the route this runs, any remaining remnants of the wall. So we start this walk at what is the most significant part of the remaining wall, and this is the West Walls, located really just behind St James's Boulevard. And in this location you can see the remains of a number of the towers, which is now used as a park. Just behind the walls as well is Newcastle's Chinatown, located on Stowell Street, which runs adjacent to the walls. So here you can see the buildings popping up above the remnants of the wall. A key feature of this place as well is Hadrian's Tower, which looms above this area. We then continue down, heading towards Central Station. And again, there's a large remnant of the walls for a considerable period of time up to Pink Lane. And from here, we cross Westgate Road and head down Pink Lane. Pink Lane is a, a mainly pedestrian path that leads from Bath Lane to Newcastle Central Station. And the route of this actually is the route of the town wall. So there's no remnants here remaining from Westgate Road to Central Station. However, the route of this lane demonstrates the route of the wall. From here, we arrive at Newcastle Central Station and head round the back of this through the Orchard Street Tunnel. And another section of the wall remains in the car park of an office building. The wall is running directly down towards the quayside but obviously we're still at the top of the Tyne Gorge at this level. Here as well, quite interestingly, you can see some repair works have been undertaken to the wall at a later date using bricks rather than stone. We climb down the quayside steps and arrive underneath the Metro Bridge. The wall would have run along the front of the quayside in order to protect from invaders from the river, but as the city grew and the importance of its river grew as well, there was a need to remove the wall in this section to allow for offloading and unloading of more ships along the quayside. So obviously the remnants are here are very few and far between, if any at all. Poking out above the swing bridge you can see the Guildhall here. The Guildhall was the municipal centre of medieval Newcastle. From here we walk along the quayside towards Sandgate and obviously Sandgate, the name comes from the name of the gate into this part of the wall. We then head up towards Manor's car park and the central motorway which are remnants of the wall. Now a wedding venue peaks above parts of City Road. Another part of the wall remains as well adjacent to the quayside multi-storey car park, backs onto pedestrian path, the route of the wall would have followed roughly this route of the road we're walking down now. Travelling under the East Coast Main Line, we arrive by Manor's multi-storey car park, and the wall again would have ran up this road. But it's a bit more approximate here because obviously massive development was undertaken in this area by the Central Motorway, so there's no historic street pattern that really remains to follow. We then cross on over the central motorway and we see Plummer's Tower which would have formed another part of the town wall which is now hidden away um, just off Market Street. And rising up round the back of Plummer's Tower is the new Bank House Tower which looms over the site if you're looking from this lower elevation here. We then take a turn up Market Street and the route of the wall here would have then followed New Bridge Street and Blackett Street back to Gallowgate. And this area of the city is obviously undergoing radical change at the minute. A very interesting view that you often wouldn't find in the city of buildings being destroyed. So of course the route would have then also ran past what is now Grey's Monument. And the remnants of the wall along the section of Blacker Street are very few and far between. It's again, this is an area that was radically developed in the 
18th century, redeveloped again in the 1960s with the creation of Eldon Square. So whilst the historic street pattern still remains of Blackett Street, beyond that there are no real remnants of the wall. Until you cross Gallagate and round the back of the Scottish church, there is a section of the wall which runs behind these group of buildings. I think this route really provides an an idea of the size of medieval Newcastle. Whilst there would have been some expansion outside of the town wall, most of the important trade, etc., and important buildings would have been contained within this in order to protect from the invading Scottish army. And I think it's quite fitting as well to finish the the walk at the Chinese Arch, as this was the area where the Scottish army did break through the wall using mines and artillery, and they invaded through the streets of Newcastle from here. 